Hopefully no terrible storms like that today, but we are seeing a lot of rain this morning. A lot of rain. We do have some thunderstorms out there and I'm not going to say no to a stronger, severe mm -hmm. storm, but chances are minimal. The real story is going to be the rainfall that it's going to make a busy morning for you. It is. Yeah, it ponds so quickly, mm -hmm. especially on those yep. shoulders and any lower lying areas. You know if you live near one because it's probably a problem spot yeah. over and over again. Yeah, well, the rain's going to add up about two to four inches between now and midnight tomorrow night. The question, will it still be raining come trick or treat time? That is what I've seen so much on Facebook and Twitter today, and we're going to answer that right now. Let's get started by taking a look outside, and this is what we are waking up to this morning. It's the rainfall that will be with us off and on. In fact, our weather kid today, Miley Coger, she's got the right idea. Umbrella, raincoat, 60 this morning, thunderstorms this afternoon at 68 degrees. Definitely want to be like Miley, and if you want your kid to be a weather kid, it's simply weatherkids at newschannel5.com. A lot of rainfall across the eastern tier of the U.S. right now. It's going to take a while to get all of this to move through. We've got snow on the back side of this. That will not be a concern for us. Not expecting to see snowfall like uh, places in the Midwest. Kansas City ex experiencing snowfall overnight and into this morning. We're just dealing with the steady rain and the occasional uh, lightning strike too. 50s out there despite the rain. 68 in McMinnville holding at 64 in Crossville. A few more strikes now. Southern parts of Sumner County as you can see just north of uh, Old Hickory there. Unfortunately, we'll continue off and on with some of these thunderstorms. The Charlotte Park area and West Nashville and Bordeaux seeing steady rainfall. Starting to see a little bit of a break in the Franklin area and parts of Brentwood. Not everybody seeing it, but about 20 minutes ago, this was completely covered in green and yellow. And now we've got a little bit of a break overhead, which is certainly a welcome sight for the morning commute. Unfortunately, more rain will move in shortly. Here's exact track temperatures today. Mild frontal boundary stalled out today. It's going to sweep through tonight as it does. The wind flow becomes northwesterly tomorrow morning around 50 to start. We're not climbing. We're dropping with temperatures, but despite the colder air moving in, it looks to be just cloudy, maybe a little miss in some spots, but no heavy rain come trick or treat time. A flake or two wouldn't surprise me in the Cumberland Plateau tomorrow night as it rings all that moisture out. But the real story is going to be uh, the cold air that moves in for the next couple of days. Looking at the next seven days, temperatures 60s today, falling temperatures for Halloween, drying out for Friday and into the weekend as we get ready to fall back. That's right, set the clocks back one hour as daylight saving time comes to an end. Great idea to check the smoke detectors and not calling 911, but if you can just call your neighborhood fire department or stop by there, they'll come out and change the batteries for you for free. Better to be safe than sorry when it comes to those smoke detectors. Hey, let's find out what the rain's doing on the roadways. Rebecca's got the latest now in the traffic center. All right, Henry, thank you. Fall back's the one that everyone likes, right? Because we get an extra hour. This is the good one. Okay, something to look forward to because this morning may be a little rough. Take a look at what it looks like. Live drive on the road showing us really nasty, wet, messy conditions on the downtown loop for us this morning. Blake Rosnowski behind the wheel saying she's just seeing more congestion than this time of the morning on a normal morning as everyone is slowing down and trying to drive a lot more carefully. So leave a few minutes early today. Help yourself out. We've got this spin around crash uh, over in the left shoulder coming down I 65 southbound from the north side of town. This is right before the I 24 merge point. So be aware of that if you come in, say from Madison, Goodlettsville, Rivergate, anywhere further north of that. East Bank frozen right now, but still seeing a little bit of congestion. Our other crash near Shelby Avenue, though, thankfully has cleared. The traffic report brought to you by Clayton Holmes. Now let's head back to the desk. Three men are behind bars this morning after police say they used DNA analysis to place them at the scene. We have details on that ahead at six. She's a successful musician and actress. Now Reba McIntyre is taking her talents to a podcast. We'll tell you coming up when they'll launch it. All right, here are your top stories this morning. Southern California is under an extreme red flag warning with Santa Ana winds expected to top 80 miles an hour. Officials are concerned about embers from the smoldering Getty fire sparking additional fires. Investigators say the blaze ignited when a tree branch fell on power lines. The White House is slamming a House resolution to formalize the impeachment inquiry, calling the probe a quote illegitimate sham. The full House vote is planned for tomorrow. This follows damaging firsthand testimony from Alexander Vindman, who listened to President Trump's call with the president of Ukraine last July.
The World Series is heading into Game 7 tonight in Houston. The Washington Nationals tied up the series with a win in Game 6, staying alive for a shot at their first World Series title. If the Astros clinch, it will be their second championship in three years. A local musician and Belmont alum is working to help others through music and through his own recovery from brain surgery, a stroke, blindness and chronic pain. Luke Putney is working to give others hopes through his nonprofit Instrumental Horizons, which donates musical instruments to socioeconomically and medically challenged communities. He's looking to help those in South Africa by writing and recording a song called Cape Town with the help of five time Grammy winner. Uh, Victor Wooten and other musician friends, he finished up the song. I wanted to be Luke's right hand man, you know, to get what he wanted. And he succeeded. <laughs> well, you had already succeeded with the song. It was easy with the song and the, and the people he, you know, he got together to play on it. How could you fail? Man, what a great story. To get a copy of the song Cape Town, all you have to do is to donate to Luke's nonprofit, and we have details on how you can do that at our website right now, newschannel5.com. And she's been in the music business for decades, and she's had a hit TV show. And yesterday, Reba McIntyre announced her new podcast is going to premiere next year. The superstars teaming up with Spotify to launch the project. So far, we know confirmed guests include Kevin Bacon, Bill Simmons, and the country group Midland. We're told this podcast will be exclusive to Spotify listeners. Reba says she's excited to connect with fans like never before. 555 right now. If you are about to head out on the roads, unfortunately, this is what it's going to look like from the dashboard. You can see Live Drive got, has those windshield wipers going pretty heavily this morning. Make sure even once the sun comes up, you've got your headlights on. When your wipers are on, your headlights must also be on. That's the law, just so everyone can see you with lower visibility in rainy situations like this. Wet roads, give yourself some extra time. Still watching the spin around crash. Left shoulder, 65 southbound. If you're coming in, about to get to that I-24 merge before the Trinity Hills area. Actually, now look, we've got someone out there helping out blocking the left lane, so everyone's merging over to the, use those right lanes instead. The traffic report brought to you by Sarah Chevrolet, Buick GMC. Now let's head over to Henry. All right, Rebecca, this morning it is a soggy start as you just showed from Live Drive and uh, Blake out there. Unfortunately, it's going to be the case for much of the day with some of these showers heavy at times. Even some winds about 30 to 40 miles per hour that are starting to move through parts of Dixon County with a few of these storms. Not severe, but uh, just keep in mind we've got some gusty winds to go along with the heavy downpours. 68 today, 49 at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And as we go through the day tomorrow, yes, we will dry out by trick or treat time, but no, it will not be warm. Look at these numbers from 49 at 8, 43 at 4, and 41 by 6. Falling temperatures heading into the weekend will be in the 50s for highs and 30s for lows. More on the soggy forecast in the next hour of News Channel 5 this morning, Amy. College athletes could soon start getting financial help while they work hard in school and play sports. Ahead at 6, we're going to tell you what steps the NCAA is taking in this process. Nick Barris coming to you live in the Five Alert Center. Overnight, a family jarred out of bed. Something shook their home. They look in the front yard. And there's a fireball. I'll tell you what it was. Plus, Tennessee has been graded by our students' math and reading scores. I'll let you know what those results were coming up. And a nonprofit that helps people fix and rebuild homes in low income areas has a new project in the works. We'll tell you where it is. Straight ahead. Good morning and happy Wednesday to you. I'm Adam Hammond. I'm Amy Watson. There are a couple of ways you can get some free food today. We're going to tell you about those options coming up in just a few minutes. That'll get your attention fast, mm -hmm. but first it's looking like it's going to be a soggy Wednesday out there. Let's get over to Henry in for Leland this morning to see how that commute's going to be. Already looking pretty shiny out there. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, the rain has been falling for a couple of hours uh, west of 65, and now we're seeing it over the metro and moving into the plateau as well. Five one hundredths of an inch have fallen in Columbia from our Skynet 5 site. Real time conditions 58 degrees. We're now at 22 hundredths and Franklin along I-65. 55 our temperature in Lawrenceburg seeing the rain now seven one hundredths of an inch 63 the temperature looking at the big picture a lot of rainfall to get through that's going to take about two days for that to happen. We are seeing a few uh, lightning strikes now with some of these showers that are becoming uh, some very isolated thunderstorms up now 
in Sumner County. We've got some pretty strong uh, wind gusts about 30 to 40 miles per hour with our storms that are moving through Dixon County right now, but we're talking about uh, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds, so it should remain below severe criteria. Between now and midnight tomorrow, yeah, we're going to add about uh, two inches of rain in many locations, courtesy of this steady, steady downpour. 68 are high today with storms, and then tonight, 53. But we'll talk about a backwards forecast for Halloween coming up shortly. Right now, let's check in with Rebecca and see what the rain is doing on the area roads. Definitely more congestion than we're used to seeing this early in the morning. Here's a look from our sky cam. This is I 40 as you're coming in from the east side. So these are our westbound lanes coming into the downtown loop area. Blake Rosnowski and live drive was just passing through this area. She said she saw someone with flashers on pulled over in the right shoulder. So just be careful. You may see a lot of that today. Uh, we've had at least two spin around crashes already since the rain started this morning. Here's the west side of town. I 40 eastbound. You can see these cars kind of kicking up the spray as you're getting closer into the 440 loop. The ramp from 40 East to 440 will be closed this weekend. I'm going to have a breakdown of all the different ramps that you're going to need to avoid this weekend as the 440 construction continues later on in the show. The good news with all of this rain, though, is right now, at least our crash count is pretty low. This one just cleared the last couple seconds, 65 at the 24 merge. So that's good for folks coming in from the north side of town. We do have a 24 eastbound crash reported, though, right at that Cheatham Davidson County line. This traffic report brought to you by RJ Young. Now let's head back to the desk. Breaking overnight, a family jarred out of bed in the middle of the night discovers a fireball in their front yard. News Channel 5's Nick Barris is in the Five Alert Center mm -hmm. to explain what what was it? Well, I'll tell you, this was what was a fireball, and boy, that car sure was charred. This happened on West Monticello Road in Madison, as you said, overnight. And turns out the family was asleep inside their home when a woman crashed her vehicle into a tree in their front yard. It burst into flames. It was an inferno. The driver was injured. We don't know to the extent, and it's not exactly clear why she crashed, but a Authorities say it's a good thing she ended up hitting the tree because if she missed it, well, they say the car likely would have ended up in the living room of that family's home. No word right now on whether or not any charges will be filed in this case, but that investigation continues. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Right now, Metro Police are looking for the men involved in an armed robbery turned shooting. The victim says three men approached him when he got out of his car at the Hickory Hollow Towers on Curtis Hollow Road last night. They demanded his belongings and got into a struggle with them. That's when he was shot. Call Crime Stoppers if you can help police find these men. And these three men are now in custody connected to a murder two years ago. Curtis Word, Kevin Hogg. Kevin Hoggett rather and Larry Bedingfield are all indicted for the robbery and murder of Moral Edwards. Edwards was shot and killed at his Ackland Park Drive apartment in July of 2017. Metro Police say DNA analysis led to the arrest. And another three men are due in court today, accused of beating a homeless man to death earlier this year. Police say Briston Reed, Christopher Lawless, and Austin Peralta repeatedly punched and kicked Nicholas Christian. It happened on 2nd Avenue North and Commerce Street. Back in June, the 30-year-old later died from the head injuries he received in that fight. A January trial is now scheduled for the retired middle school assistant principal accused of crossing state lines to have sex with children. Thomas Monty is in custody in Virginia after getting caught in an FBI sting operation earlier this month. His jury trial begins on January 13th. Continuing coverage this morning of a deadly crash involving a former Montgomery County teacher and her husband. Our traffic expert Rebecca Schleicher joins us now with the latest on an arrest in that case, Rebecca. Amy Fu and Kay Subawang died in that crash on Highway 79 last month. An arrest warrant says Miguel Ruiz Matias here looked drunk at the time of the crash and took off when a trooper went to call a translator while police Caught up with him, the Leaf Chronicle reports they took him to the hospital, but he was released and then disappeared. Now, after about a month, he is officially back in custody after police in Indiana caught up with him over the weekend. Good work to them. The new information now this morning. We're learning over the last decade. Casey Freeman read through the national report card. And Casey, what's the overall message about student achievement in the mid -state? Well, Amy, in Tennessee, they saw virtually no change um, as a result of these test scores. Now, every two years, students in the fourth and eighth grades will be taking tests to to determine their knowledge of reading and math. Now, the state saw 
dramatic growth in 2011 and 2013, but hasn't seen that trend continue since then. Now, since the last survey was taken two years ago, fourth grade math shows plenty of growth, but that's after recovering from a decline in 2015. Reading has increased, but it still wasn't by that much. And while these scores are showing improvement, it's not making up for the years of backsliding. Now, what's so disheartening is only 30 to 40 percent of Tennessee students are on track for future grade levels, college and career success. Now, Amy Adam, coming up in the next half hour, this study did show how each demographic is doing in the state. And I'll let you know what that had to show. For now, live at the Tennessee Department of Education, I'm Casey Freeman, News Channel 5. Thank you, Casey. Tennessee is one of 15 states where the number of kids without insurance jumped. The Georgetown University Center for Children and Families based its study on the data from 2016 through 2018. Experts are concerned this 400,000 child increase is happening during economic growth with more adults working. Nashville is on the rise and one group is reaching out to help people who aren't able to rebuild their homes. Mo Hyder live in Nashville this morning where a nonprofit is focusing its efforts right now. What's going on this Mo? Yeah, hey there, Adam. Yeah, this nonprofit is called Rebuilding Nashville Together, and what they do is they fix and rebuild homes in low-income areas, and their next project is going to be in the Bordeaux community. Now, this is some video that we shot from last year. Check it out over here. It shows that it shows volunteers were helping a woman in North Nashville get a new roof, something that would have cost her $15,000 if she had to pay from her own pocket. They want to help more people like her, so today they're announcing a two-year plan to rebuild homes, but this time, as I mentioned in Bordeaux, Rebuilding Nashville Together helps people struggling to pay for housing maintenance when their home starts to decline, particularly in those low-income areas. They do this all free of charge. Homeowners can apply for this process on their organization's website. I'm actually going to have a link to that on my Twitter page. That Twitter handle is at mhider underscore nc5. Be sure to give that a look this morning. In downtown Nashville, we're Hyder News Channel 5. All right, as you just saw there from Mo, at least he's finding a way to stay dry because the showers are here and you've got a steady rainfall out there. Let's take a look at Power of Five radars and we've got it on the wider picture for you, but uh, man, we've got some heavy rain, even some winds between 30 to 40 miles per hour as you get over towards uh, these showers that are moving through parts of Dixon County as well this morning. Uh, right along I-40, even going through only, you've got that steady rainfall that continues across the Mid-South. As far as the movement with this goes, most of it is to the east at about uh, 30 miles per hour. So to give you an idea of when these heavier cells might move in, well, taking you about a half hour out. It'll be in uh, the Pegram area around 635 and Kingfield uh, around 639. Here's exact track. We put this into motion for you. The showers may get a bit of a break for the afternoon rush, but it will pick up once again as we head towards this afternoon and into the evening hours tomorrow morning. As the cold front pushes through northerly winds, takes the showers out of here in time for trick or treating. Clouds will linger. Can't rule out a little bit of mist for some, but the real story will be the heavy rain will be out of here. Hey, if you were hoping to walk the pup today, make sure you've got the rain gear to do so. Uh, we've basically got uh, red paws all the way through. 7 a.m. We'll probably go on and update that to a, a red pall. Temperatures in the 60s for much of the day and the occasional thunderstorm as well. I want to say good morning to all the students at Heritage Elementary School in White House. You are our Wednesday school of the day. Hope you all remember the rain gear as you head off to school. Let's send it down to the newsroom now with our own Nick Bears. All right, thank you, Henry. Live in the Five Alert Center at this hour, police in Long Beach, California, investigating a mass shooting, three dead, at least nine injured. The circumstances still unclear. I'll have the very latest when we come back. And a music star is turning the loss of his son into a way to help others. How Toby Mack wants Truett's memory to empower and encourage young people and how you can get involved. Plus, a signing for Nashville SC, why you won't see this player on the pitch when the Major League Soccer team debuts next year. We have breaking news this morning. Police in California are investigating a mass shooting overnight, which left three people dead. 
News Channel 5 Snake Bears live in the Five Alert Center with the latest from our national feed this morning. Yeah, this video just coming in this morning, Adam, and it's out of Long Beach, California. And again, as you mentioned, uh, this is a, a mass shooting that's uh, something under investigation still as we speak. At last count, police there reported a dozen people were shot at a home there, three dead, nine others with serious injuries. Now, this happened at what they described as a Halloween party. Officers say they found dozens of shell casings in an alley behind the home where they believe the guns were fired. Now, the suspects escaped from the area in a car and remain at large. Police are looking into the possible connection between the shooters and the victims, but right now, no word on identities on either side of that. And motive does remain a mystery. Continues to be looked into this morning. We'll have updates later in the day. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Also new this morning, a memorial for the TDOC administrator killed by an escaped inmate earlier this year. The Kentucky Department of Corrections gifted a dogwood tree in Deborah Johnson's memory. Her family and co-workers planted it at the Tennessee Prison for Women, which is where Johnson started her career. And the memory of a Christian rapper's late son will help other kids. Toby Mack's son, Truett, died last week at home in Franklin. He was just 21 years old, just days after launching his solo music career. And Toby Mack, Mack has now launched the Truett Foster Foundation to help kids get an education and chase their musical dreams. And you can donate, as you see here, online if you'd like to. Students chasing their athletic dreams could soon start seeing some financial help. The NCAA's Board of Governors now says it will start the process of allowing college athletes to make money from their name and likeness. However, you still have to they have still have to work out the details of exactly how that's going to work. We have to make sure we understand that we're different than the professional ranks. Uh, we're not looking for a pay for play model. Uh, we want our student athletes to still be able to make sure they're making a choice based upon academics, athletics, those type of things as opposed to how much money I can make at a school. The board unanimously voted to move forward in an effort to improve the athletic experience. College basketball players at Murray State, they're going to break in a new court this season. Take a look here. The CFSB Center is going to feature a new logo placement and a new men's three-point line as well. There's now a Bigger safe area under the baskets as well, which is getting replaced. The previous goals, they date back to the center's opening back in 1998. Those are going to be changed as well. Just think what John Morant could have done there. The Nashville SE just signed a college student, but not for the role you'd expect. Cormac Dulsta Dooley will represent Nashville SE in an esports competition. This 19 year old freshman at Temple University is the only player in history to win all three official Major League Soccer esports competitions. Now he's heading to the FIFA competition and will get a scholarship to keep pursuing a sports management career. And you can meet him Sunday at the Tennessee EA Sports FIFA Challenge Invitational Final, which starts at 11 at Vanderbilt. And the Preds signed Roman Yossi to a contract extension. He is now locked in with the Preds through 2028. Keeping Yossi out of free agency comes with a $72 million contract. Good for him. Need his agent, you know. <laughs> the Preds beat the Chicago Blackhawks in a shutout last night, and that's really good news for you this morning. Yeah, you can stop by it twice daily, any location to get a free donut today. You need to get the coupon from the team's website or have the app. You can yeah. just show the app. You have a, uh, a little voucher on there for that as well. And you can also get a free taco today, thanks to sports, as part of Taco Bell's Steal a Bay, Steal a Taco promotion. The free Doritos Locos Tacos are available from 2 to 6 this afternoon, and that's thanks to the Washington Nationals shortstop, Trey Turner, for stealing that base. And the Nationals and Houston Astros are playing in Game 7 of the World Series tonight, as after the Nats beat the Astros 7-2 to last night on the road. The visiting teams won all six games so far in the series, which is a first for the MLB, NHL, and NBA combined. Five live traffic at 617. It is wet and messy on the roads. Check out the dash cam from Live Drive right now. Blake Rosnowski heading up to the Cheatham County line on I-24. She's going to then turn around because we've got a series of crashes reported in those eastbound lanes. One of them backing things up in the New Hope Road area. The other one, a semi over off on the right shoulder closer to Old Hickory Boulevard. So just be aware of that. West Nashville, we've got this person in the retaining wall area. Left shoulder, I-40 inbound at 46th Avenue. So 
right before you get to the 440 loop, everyone having to move over to the right to give that person some space. And then coming up I-24 westbound, we've got the right lane block for this crash, not too far from Briley Parkway on the south side of town. So a lot of single car crashes, which is not uncommon for a wet morning like this one. Take a look right now at our crash and traffic map. Thankfully, not too much traffic just yet, but I'd leave early because mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of folks slowing down to better handle these wet conditions. This traffic report brought to you by the Wyatt Johnson Automotive Group. And a lot of people are going to be running around today getting those last minute Halloween preps, whether mm -hmm. you got to get the candy oh, or yeah. the costume last minute touches, hopefully by this point. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> you, you said you think it's going to look good for the trick or treaters. I it's just like felt that on transition that line. to here's the pressure. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no rain, Henry. Come on. Um, I, I'm thinking the heavy rain is going to be east of us. Okay. I think it'll still be cloudy. I wouldn't say no to maybe a little bit of mist at times, but make sure they've got something to stay warm. Yeah. It's going to be cold. Cold front's going to sweep through tomorrow. Temperatures will fall because of it. Today, as you head out, our weather kid, this is the right idea. Make sure you've got the umbrella and a raincoat. This is uh, Miley Koger, and she is definitely ready for the rain today because we've got it this morning. We'll have it this afternoon. 60 this morning, 68 by this afternoon. Hey, we have got a 